Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers IAS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 5th January 2018. The first issue is regarding the trafficking of children from orphanages. The issue is in news because the Supreme Court recently has decided to look into the problem of child trafficking which violates the dignity of the child. The court in this regard has highlighted that the Human Rights Law of 1993 makes all the states responsible for setting up exclusive human rights courts with special public prosecutors in such cases in every district. The court further said that a person found guilty of trafficking children apart from being liable to punishment is also liable for the violation of human rights. Given that children constitute the most vulnerable sections of the society, there needs to be additional care to safeguard their rights and the recent move by the Supreme Court is a step in the right direction. The next issue in news is the shortcomings in the implementation of the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act. The issue is in news because of the petition filed in the Supreme Court questioning the lack of implementation of the various provisions under the said act. Let's briefly look into the various provisions under the act to understand what are the shortcomings. The Protection of Women Against Sexual Harassment Act defines what constitutes sexual harassment and creates a mechanism for the redressal of sexual harassment related complaints with various safeguards against false charges. It mandates every employer with 10 or more employees at an office or branch to constitute an internal complaints committee and the district officer to constitute a local complaints committee at each district. These complaint committees have the powers of a civil court and are required to provide for conciliation between the parties involved before initiating an inquiry. The Act further prescribes penalties for non-compliance for the various provisions of that, even leading to cancellation of license or registration to conduct business in some cases. The petition filed in the Supreme Court recently pointed out that the government at the state level has not appointed the district officers or the local committees as prescribed by the Act. Also, there has been no emphasis on ensuring the reporting and collection of annual compliance report from workplaces. The issue is very important to us from the examination point of view as any legislation or issue affecting women's rights have to be taken at utmost seriously. With that, let's move on to the next issue in news, which is an editorial on the recent violence in Maharashtra. As we have already seen, in yesterday's news analysis, the violence erupted after a clash between the Dalit Mahar community and individuals of the higher caste at a gathering for the celebration of 200th anniversary of the Battle of 1818. This battle had resulted in the decisive defeat of the Peshwas by the British rulers and we saw how contesting views on the outcome of the battle is the primary reason behind the conflict. The editorial today is talking about the various administrative lapses in preventing the violence. In this regard, it highlights that the police had failed to anticipate the potential of the problem given that it was the 200th anniversary and the expectation of crowd participation was always larger and more high profile than the preceding years. Therefore, the police should have increased the security at the site. Adding to this, there were also indications of tensions after the vandalization of the Samadhi of a Mahar who is said to have performed the last rites of Sambhaji who is the son of Shivaji. The, the site being not far from Bhima Karagao, the administration was aware of the incident and its potential of causing trouble. Coming to the various factors responsible for the flaring up of the incident, apart from the economic insecurities due to unemployment, and falling levels of income. Is the neo reservation movements in Maharashtra led by dominant groups like the Marathas, who also demand dilution of provisions under the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act, therefore further creating suspicions in the minds of the backward classes? In this regard, the political parties and various organizations must refrain from further polarizing the environment but must address the anxieties of various sections holistically. With that hope, let's move on to the next issue in news, which is regarding 
investigation of the Securities and Exchange Board of India into the alleged violations of the insider trading norms. We had already seen how SEBI had launched an investigation into the leak of price sensitive information on WhatsApp groups. The SEBI has further widened its investigation to cover analysts, brokers, as well as companies and their officials to probe into their involvement in sharing of unpublished price sensitive information which violate the insider trading regulations thereby benefiting a few with access to such information. We will look into this issue in further detail as it evolves in the future. Till then let's move on to the next issue in news which is regarding the prevailing tensions in the Korean Peninsula. We had seen yesterday that the North Korean leader had expressed his intent to start dialogue with South Korea and both countries have re-established the hotline which was suspended. The US government has warned against raising any hopes on North Korea's peace overture and it says that it is a strategy of North Korea to divide the five countries that is the United States, South Korea, China, Japan and Russia over the issue of peace in the Korean Peninsula thereby furthering its goal of being accepted as a nuclear capable nation. As we have already discussed, there are various important players in the region like the United States which supports South Korea and China which supports North Korea. And it is these countries who have further aggravated the tensions in the region and therefore have a responsibility to act responsibly to de-escalate these tensions. The next issue in news is regarding the new video released by Pakistani authorities which features a video statement made by Mr. Kulbushan Jadav where he claims to be a commissioned officer of the Indian Navy as well as working for India's external intelligence agency that is the RNDW. For further details on the issue, please go back and watch the monthly current affairs roundup for the month of December. The other issues in news today include an opinion in the Hindu on whether legislators should be barred from practicing law. We have already discussed the arguments both for and against debarring MPs and MLAs from practicing law given the conflict of interest between their responsibilities as a legislator and their responsibility to protect their client's interest as a lawyer. And for further details, please go back and watch my previous news analysis videos. The final issue in news is a short duration discussion which happened in, in the parliament yesterday on the state of the economy. There were various questions raised on demonetization, the implementation of GST, recapitalization of public sector banks, etc. And the finance minister reassured that the government is doing all the efforts to meet the fiscal deficit targets as well as accelerate growth. We'll look into the issue in detail once the budget for the financial year is out. With that, I conclude today's news analysis. Do like, share and comment to support this initiative. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.